Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about improving at league without actually having to use solo queue. So I hope you've all had a lovely start to 2022. We're in season 12 now um, and look if you didn't get the results you wanted in season 11 or you feel as though something's off with your current process or you feel as though you're just not on the right trajectory this might be an interesting video for you. Now you will have to excuse the voice I'm currently recovering from COVID so just try and bear with me here. Now um, on the podcast I talk a lot about why improving at league is oftentimes harder than many other the traditional sports, whether it be weightlifting or American football or whatever other traditional sport. The reason being is that it's very difficult for us to replicate certain moments in a game. Sure, we have an, we have this, you know, say, unsophisticated practice tool where sure you can do some combos and things like that, but largely, you know, we're going to go from one game that's a 15-minute stomp to one game that's a 15-minute slugfest, we, where let's say we want to improve at our mid-game, we might have three 15-minute stomps. It's very difficult for us to actually isolate specific parts of our gameplay. We don't have the luxury of saying, okay, everyone line up, we're at this moment in the game, there's this much time, and just do this. Or we can't isolate a given muscle or a specific element of our play. It's very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, it is very difficult. Which leads me to what we're going to be talking about today, which is LOL Dodge Game. Now, what is LOL Dodge Game? Well, LOL Dodge Game is essentially like a browser mini game where you're this little character and it feels a lot like League where you've got incoming minions, incoming projectiles, you have to kill minions with something like an Ezreal Q and while at simultaneously avoiding other skill shots. Now, this is just one mode, but this is the mode that we're going to be talking about today or predominantly in this video. Now, one thing that's really, imp it really, I guess, confused me with like the league improvement culture is that, that, or the narrative is that people focus a lot on runes and itemization and mid-game macro and, you know, champions and champ select and all this crap. At the end of the day, I, I go into a lot of like gold reviews, especially, and sometimes even platinum reviews. And I'm like, okay, sure, we can look at the mid game and, you know, we can look at your, you know, optimization of your OPG and stuff like that. But we're going to the game, you're playing Lux, you've missed your first three Lux E's at the beginning of the game, or you're playing Zed and you've missed your first three WEQ combos. Well, nothing else matters. It doesn't matter if you started uh, Longsword Three Pots or Longsword Refillable or D-Shield or D-Blade. It doesn't matter if you started C-Pot or Doran's Ring. It doesn't matter if you went Airy or Comet. None of this matters in the grand scheme of things if you literally can't hit your abilities. Hitting your abilities matters way more than anything else. Everything else is just noise comparatively to being able to simply hit your abilities. Now, in the Midland Academy, I've been putting a large emphasis on using LOL Dodge Game to the extent that I actually created a challenge out of it and we've actually got a leaderboard. So as you can see on the right-hand side, this is just you know some of the people on the leaderboard here. It actually scrolls down a lot more. You can see me there in rank 17. Of all the people that have been um, playing LOL Dodge Game and kind of trying to improve at LOL Dodge Game. Now, the rules of the MLA LOL Dodge Game Challenge is that you only play on hard mode with a skill shot and dodge game. This is specifically because um, I find like there's a combo where it's only skill shot or only dodge. I feel like when you do skill shot and dodge, it's just more replicable for what the game will actually feel like. And I feel like it translates to the actual game of League much better. There's no flash or any other abilities outside of Q, and there's no holding down the mouse button. So these are the rules that we use in the MLA that has really helped us isolate skills, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and this has been a massive hit inside the Midland Academy and something that I cannot recommend enough. Now, I have noticed a few trends over the past few months of people utilizing the LOL Dodge Game minigame. Lower scores were nearly always from the lower ELO members. LOL Dodge Game scores nearly always correlated to in-game micro-competence slash confidence. And o people who did play OSU in the past did have an immediate advantage, but it kind of capped out at a certain level. That's something to keep in mind. Now, why is LOL Dodge Game so powerful as a tool? Now, micro is a very, I would say it's like an all-encompassing term. You know, it includes tethering, skill shot accuracy, avoiding skill shots, clicking accuracy, clicking speed, and more. Because LOL Dodge Game actually mimics mix the feel of the game, it is one of the best ways to actively isolate the skill set outside of actually 1v1ing. You can theoretically, you know, organize 1v1s, and I do that within the Midland Academy, get people to do 1v1s, say if you want to learn a specific matchup or get better at tethering, 1v1s is very good, but it is logistically much more difficult. You have to set a time, you have to find someone that you get along with, you have to like be there long enough to actually get value from it. 1v1s are good, but it just is so difficult to do, especially for the average person. Now, there's two extremely interesting findings that I've experienced from playing a lot of LOL Dodge game. And you wouldn't even guess what these actually are. Number one, 
Low dodge game actively, it actually helps people achieve flow state. I've met many people in the Midland Academy who simply struggle to express their best self in the game. And a common thing is that I see is that they're playing a game and they're in the middle of the game and they'll start to like, you know, they don't say it outright, but you know, in their mind you can see and I, they actually talk to me after the game telling me what they'll think and they'll say things like, oh, now I'm going to lose because this person did this or I did this. Oh, I can't believe I missed that. Oh my God, I'm so bad. They, they're like, in a way, they're backseat gaming themselves. They're like commentating what is happening in the game. It's like there's them playing the game and the way I imagine it, there's like another version of, of themselves behind them that is like commentating what they're seeing. Now, when, when people do this, it's impossible to express your best self. It's impossible to play at your highest level because... You're just constantly judging yourself. You need to be free flow. You need to be present in the moment. Now, LOL Dodge Game is amazing at improving upon this because the great thing is there's a score that is up the top that shows you the score that you're currently getting. If you are looking at the score and being like, oh my God, I'm at 5,000 now. Oh my God, I'm at 6,000 now. You just won't get a higher score. It literally forces you to get better at this. Otherwise, you'll get capped out. You'll get capped out at like 4,000 or something because every single time you get close to that, that, that number, you're just going to start thinking in your head, oh my God, I'm so good. Oh my God, what's going to happen? You're going to start thinking rather than being flow state, rather than simply expressing your best self. So I found this myself, you know, when I'm trying to get high scores in this, as soon as I get to around 5,000, I used to like start shitting myself. Oh my God, I'm getting, you know, higher and higher and higher. But this allows me to really get better at controlling my emotions, get better at, I guess, entering the flow state. And I think for people that have a lot of ranked anxiety or they're thinking a lot about the LP, they will struggle. They struggle with this a lot and, and LOL Dodge Game can help them significantly with it. The second one. It's a beautiful warm-up process and in-between game task. So let's just say you struggle to know what to do as a warm-up or you just don't have a warm-up. It's perfect as a warm-up tool because it's easy, it's fun, you can put music in the background. It's just very, very convenient. It's better than doing a full game on a Smurf because sometimes you just don't have time to do a full game on your Smurf account. Or, um, you know, maybe you lose focus in between the games in your block. Say you're doing a three block and then after that first game, you know, you go on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Due to all these distractions around you on your computer, um, LOL Dodge can, can act as a really solid minigame, a tool or a task that you can actively do that's going to kind of maintain that intensity and keep you in the zone, or at least prevent you from being incredibly distracted. So something to keep in mind as well. Now I want to talk a little bit about how to get a high score and what actually is a high score. Now on the right, I've got a little table outlining rough goals each ranked player should ideally strive for. So, you know, silver 2,000, gold roughly 3,500, platinum 5,000, diamond 5,500, and master plus 6,000 plus. Um, but look, you don't need to get this number every single time. If you can get it roughly every 20 attempts, then you're in a pretty good spot. I've currently got around 6,300, my goal being 7,000. There is a big, big jump in difficulty around 5,000. So I feel like if you can get to 5,000 as a platinum player, you're in an okay position. Um, but these are you know, what I would recommend to, to aim for if you are at those given ranks. Um, I have have had I have had people that are in diamond that struggle to get like over 2,500. And funnily enough, the people that struggle to, the people that do get to like say diamond four and they struggle to get over like 3,000 or something, they actually are stuck at that rank because their, their micro isn't good enough. The thing is, you know, you know, this is quite complex because certain champions require a certain level of mechanical ability, but um, this person in the MLA was an Oriana player. And I even said, before even knowing what their score was on LOL Dodge Game, I said, look, you're just, if you don't improve your micro ability and your mechanic, your tethering and your clicking speed and your clicking accuracy, that sort of thing, you're not going to get a, out of low diamond. It's impossible for you to get to D2. Highly, highly unlikely you're going to get D2+. Plus. And then when I heard what their score was on LOL Dodge Game, it made perfect sense to me. So, you know, this is something that I'd really urge you to keep in mind moving forward. Now, LOL Dodge Game, another interesting finding, it forced me to balance my skill shot competence on both sides of my character. One thing that I found when I was playing LOL Dodge Game is that on the left side of my character, I felt very uncomfortable. Like, shooting a skill shot on my left-hand side felt way less comfortable than shooting it on my right hand side and i know this for a fact as well and and why it's always backed up with in-game specifics is that on victor when i was casting my e on a certain direction or when i'm looking a certain direction i was way less accurate and way less smooth and it just overwhelmed my mental stack whereas on one side it was actually completely fine lol dodge game actually allowed me to balance my comfortability on both sides of my character because um, i remember at the start when i was i was like gravitating always to the right hand side of the map 
and then I had to brute force going to the left side because if you don't use both sides of the map, you actually won't get a high score. Something to keep in mind. Now, to get a high score, you must A, be able to keep the combo score going, forcing you to have great quality skill shot accuracy. B, be able to click fast and accurately, not under or overstepping so that you can actually dodge future incoming projectiles. The thing is, what you want is when the projectile comes, you don't want to overstep it because if you overstep it, then you're likely going to run into something else. But if you understep it, then ideally you're just going to get hit by it. So you really got to walk that tightrope. C, you got to learn to not think, entering the flow state, trusting your instincts like we covered before. Have great situational awareness and feel your way out of sticky situations. You can't think your way out of things because it's just too much. And this is also why LOL Dodge Gamer has a massive flow on effect to skirmish improvement. And then E, not judge yourself and have fun with it. You know, this is the thing. It's like as you're getting better at the game and you start to get higher scores or maybe there's a specific stressful moment in the game, you can't judge yourself for whatever happens. You can't judge the game state. You just got to be one with the game. You got to be very present in the moment. Otherwise, once you start thinking about, oh my God, am I going to win this? Oh, am I going to lose this? How much LP am I going to get? Oh my God. Like you're just not going to win the game or you're not going to express your best self, which is going to decrease the likelihood of winning the game. So some final thoughts here. The fact that LOL Dodge Game tracks APM as well is helpful for noting down your improvement with clicking speed. If you're getting under 340 APM, then that is a little bit problematic. Anything above that is preference. I would actually start a challenge with your friends or team. You know, make it fun. In the MLA, we've done this challenge where, you know, who could get the highest score? It did incentivize people to try harder and, and get more out of it. The more you put into Lord Dodge Game, the more you get out of it. If you don't take it seriously and don't really play it with intensity, you just won't get that much out of it. You really got to treat it as a tool that actively improves your mechanical ability and many of these other aspects. So, you know, play around with it. it, it competition's healthy. It's a fun way to raise the stakes and raise the intensity. And I'm not saying Lord Dodge Game is perfect, but it's the closest thing we currently have to the isolation of skills and a solid warm-up tool. I personally use it. If you check tune into my stream in the discord i'm pretty much o uh, i'm always playing it in between my games it's helped me dramatically with my micro competence and my consistency so i'd love to hear your high scores in the comments have fun with it i'll leave you with one of my high score runs um, but otherwise you know let me know how it goes guys it's really helped me it's really helped my community I strongly recommend giving it a go i'll leave the link in the description below cheers